we say and relate well, you need to learn to communicate accurately and well, and you've got to learn to emotionally regulate. That is about maturity. You've got to be able to use a higher order brain to regulate the lower order brain so that you can stay present to yourself and others. When you operate out of the lower reptile brain there, you're not present to yourself and you're not present to, to others. You're not present to the relationship, the idea of us. And so the greatest gift you actually give yourself is the gift of being present. But to do that, you've got to be able to emotionally regulate that lower order animal brain. Sadly, most people are never taught how to regulate that part of your brain. Again, like I said earlier, you want that part of your brain working and being chased by a lion, 18 wheeler coming at you, things like that. But in intimate relationships, you've got to learn to regulate that part of your brain so that you can stay in the higher order brain, which is where compassion flows from, by the way. And compassion is the way you do this, all right? You got to move to compassion. But to move to compassion, you're going to have to go to a higher order brain. See, the lower brain is self-protective. It's all about me. The higher order brain, I can take a deep breath. That's one of the ways you can access the higher order brain when you're in this crazy cycle. It's one of you just take a deep breath. Because whenever you're in that lower part of your brain, your heart races. It's meant to. Fight, flight, or freeze, right? But... If you start to regulate your breathing, you'll regulate your heart. And when you regulate your heart and get slow your heart rate down, you can access the higher order brain and start to think and be present. And once we can learn to regulate that lower order emotional brain, then we can begin to say, you know, when I did this, how did you see that? Help me understand what it was like for you when I did that. What did your brain tell you when this happened? You can now begin to listen and ask questions about what did their brain see? What did their brain interpret? What is their brain telling them? When I, when, I, when I did that, what did your brain tell me about me? You don't love me. Wow. So when I did that, your brain said, I don't love you? Yes. Where did you learn that? Help me understand it. I get to, get, I get to understand their perspective. And that creates compassion on my part. And then they can. You know what the real key is to shut this whole crazy cycle off? It's one word. It's confiding. Whenever you confide, that requires vulnerability. So the way you shut the loop off is basically simple. Someone takes the risk and confide. Confide what? Confide what's going on inside of them. This is why in Relate Well, we have the express skill and a reveal skill. Both of those are problem revealing. Uh, they're, they're both problem uh, understanding skills. It allows me to confide in you what's going on inside of me. And because I'm not in a reactive behavior, I use a skill which requires confiding. I'm not a reactive behavior. I'm confiding. Confiding is a vulnerability. You see the vulnerability. You see the emotional openness in me. That doesn't create a react negative reaction to you. That actually creates compassion and empathy in the listener. So I'm not in a reactive behavior because I chose to use a skill in open confiding you. And then you're now you're not seeing a reactive behavior in me. So you're not being triggered. You actually moved to empathy, and I see the empathy. What does the empathy, your empathy say to me? Wow, it means you love me. You care about me. It means my thoughts and feelings are important. You shut the loops off, these, these crazy cycle loops. You shut them off purely by confiding. And either of you can do it because it's a cycle. Either of you can confide and shut this whole thing off. And at the end of it, you created something more loving. At the end of it, you've created something meaningful. At the end of it, your usness is intact. Your relationship has been protected and preserved. You see, these crazy cycles, Lori Gordon referred to them as emotional allergy infinity loops. People, people have different names for it. A lot of people write about these, the, this, these crazy cycles. The trigger trouble loops. That's what I call them. But here's the thing about them. They can go on and on and on and on and on. Week after week, month after month, and they can go on for years. And you never shut them down. And it's all from this lower order brain interpreting what's happening out here from meaning things in the past. You need to be able to understand that the brain makes assumptions about everything. It tries to interpret everything that happens, that it experiences. But the interpretations, the meaning that your brain attaches to things that happen, those meanings come from your past and it may not be true 
right out here, right in here, right now, in this moment. This is why healthy, mature people, when they're in, in, in when they're emotionally triggered, they're aware that they're triggered. One of the things that I had to do in my own in my own personal development is be aware, self-aware of when I got triggered at that emotional level. And my way of doing things when I'm triggered is to take a deep breath because I want to regulate my heart. I take a deep breath and I can feel myself access the higher order brain. And once I access that higher order brain, I can say, help me understand. What does this mean for you? When this happened, what did your brain tell you? I become a student. And I learn their perspective. Just by doing that, I shut the whole loop off. See, anybody can shut the trigger treble loop off. The crazy cycle, as Gary Smalley calls it, John Trent, different names for different people. Any Because it's a circle, it's, a, it's, a, it's just a circle that keeps going on and on and on. Either you can shut it down and create a new way of being. The field of marriage therapy is built off what's known as systems theory. I won't bore you with all the facts around it, but the idea is that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. All right. And so when you live for the whole, what I call us, you begin to realize that the whole is far, far, far more meaningful. All right. And the parts have greater meaning and value in the context of the whole. In the context of when the whole is healthy and strong, you see. And, and so all, all, all systems, be it biological systems or relational systems, seek a steady, a, steady, a steady state, all right? This is why some people stay in crazy cycles for so long, because the, the crazy cycle is the steady state. It, it's what's called homeostasis in the, in the, in the uh, systems theory world, all right? Um, really good book by um, Napoleon Hill, those who are in the personal development world. He wrote a book in 1930 called Outwitting the Devil. It's not a Christian book, but it is highly powerful and understanding why people never become successful in staying in dysfunctional patterns. Hill's term for homeostasis way back in the early 30s, he called it harmonic rhythm, that there's a rhythm to life. Just as much as a spring, there's going to be a summer and a fall and a winter. That's harmonic rhythm. That's homeostasis. The problem is, I yell, you withdraw, you withdraw, I yell more. That's a rhythm. And a lot of these rhythms are dysfunctional. But they feel normal. They're familiar. They're comfortable. Or like people like to say, well, that's the way we've always done it. Might be, but it's pretty dysfunctional, pretty unhealthy, and pretty immature. So the real key is to change the dysfunctional pattern to a healthier pattern and make that the new norm. You make that the new norm. That's going to take time, intentionality, but eventually it becomes a habit, just a new way. This is why my work over the years uh, in my own transformation, my own journey of healing was I intentionally used the skills and tools I learned. Why? Because I wanted to change my old way of being to a new way of being, so it just became a pattern for me. And this is the power of living life apart from your triggers and not allowing your emotional triggers to dictate your present, but to be able to step back from those things, get, get a sense of where they came from, own my own triggers so I don't allow my trigger issues from my past and history to destroy us, the relation, the marriage itself. And that requires maturity, by the way. And so our work in Relate Well really is about living life out of four words. We've trademarked this. It's called the, we call this the four protectors. Um, and we take this everywhere. We take, we take it to the business everywhere. I've been teaching on this for about I don't know, almost 20 years, but very intentional the last 13. Our Relate Well program is built around these four words. That in all aspects of your life, if you want to protect your relationships, live a life of goodwill, live a life of respect, live a life of humility, and live a life of empathy, care. And if I become a person of goodwill, respect, humility, and empathy, 
that I know for a fact that I'm loving and caring. Because loving people always treat others with goodwill, respect, empathy. You can't do those three things without humility. It's a very powerful way to live your life. And so, in conclusion, wrapping this up, when you notice you're in a, tr in a trigger, take a time out. Get away. Take a deep breath, all right? Oh, by the way, when you take a time out, we have a rule for time out and relate well. Don't just walk away. Let them know you're wa why. So listen, I need some time to calm down. Let them know why you're walking away. So I just need some time to calm down. I'll be back in an hour, all right? Take, take a time out if you need to. Do some deep breathing. Self-soothe. Gottman's research talks about the power of being able to self-soothe. Lower your heart rate. Access the higher order brain. And then what we say in our world, go get your relate well skills and use those and create a new way of being without the negativity of the, um, of the old trigger loop. You create a new loop, a loving loop, a mature loop, a loop of relating well to each other, a, a loop of goodwill and respect.